Alien in the Freezer. A debunked hoax lives on. As I worked on my previous video about Art Bell, I began to really see just how many hoaxes and missed predictions he was involved in during his tenure at Coast to Coast AM. All of them would fizzle out and be proven untrue. That's where most of these hoaxes ended. Astonishingly, one has persisted seemingly to this day. A hoax intended to con the feeble-minded out of their money. And guess what? That's a crime, boys and girls. It's called fraud. How could a hoax that has been proven false and fraudulent continue to trick people for decades? Not all hoaxes are created equal. Some hoaxes are simply an individual pulling a prank to get some quick, short-lived notoriety. Others might be tricksters injecting a little chaos into an already chaotic world. Or perhaps it's just some lonely jackass having a laugh at the expense of the gullible. But few have a complex of individuals responsible for propagating their own little section of an agreed upon lie and covering each other's booties. A network of criminal posing as legitimate authorities in an effort to give a ridiculous story an air of authenticity. The story I am referring to, of course, is the Dr. Jonathan Reed UFO hoax. Since the airing of those original Coast to Coast AM programs in 1998, which cover the saga, there have been several other people seemingly inspired by Reed's tale and have attempted to fool the public to varying degrees of success. I'm also noticing a trend in which some rando paranormal investigator attaches themselves to this, these types of stories. But aliens aren't the only paranormal entity people have claimed to have stuffed in the ice boxes next to the frozen peas. In addition to the intergalactic travelers, I have included a few other tales where freezer meets freaky phenomenon, including far out favorites, Bigfoot, and ghosts. This is where our journey begins. Diving deep. First up, there can be unintended consequences for perpetrating an alien in the freezer hoax. As one Chinese farmer found out the hard way. Spinning a yarn of that type can get you attention for sure. It just might get you the attention of Johnny Law. In June 2013, a Shadong province man who claimed to have killed an alien and stored it in his freezer. He was arrested after the story went viral on Chinese social media. Nikai sparked this internet frenzy when he posted a series of pictures of the interred dead creature. Close-up shots show the alien's wide-eyed face and a sinewy hand with a red cigarette packet placed on its palm. Apparently, that was her favorite brand. In other pictures, the creature's feet are bound as it lies in the depths of his freezer. Likai was sentenced for five days in detention for creating false reports, disturbing the public order after admitting to police that he had engineered a hoax as a publicity stunt, according to Chinese Radio International. The alien Lee claimed to have killed was made of rubber, wire, glue, and white pigment, the police chief reported. Officials said that Lee spent 121 that is 1455 US. in crafting materials bought from a local farmer's market. Lee, a seafood dealer, first posted the story on a popular online forum. He claimed to have accidentally caught and killed the alien with an electrified wire trap used to catch small game on the banks of the Yellow River. He claimed to have spotted five aliens and one even crashed to the ground and hit a high voltage rabbit trap which Lee had put in place. 
Lee said he collected the corpse and drove home and preserved the body in his freezer. In his post, Lee alleged he had encountered several aliens on the early morning of March 9th when one touched his electrified trap. Lee waited three months to post his story, complete with photos of the frozen alien corpse. However, the hoax thawed after the web director at vehicle tech company China Transinfo divulged on his verified Sino Weibo account, China's equivalent to Facebook, that the alien story was a publicity stunt for a Binju seafood company which sells artificial sea cucumbers. Good lord, that sounds that sounds horrendous that sounds horrendous actually. He insisted the story was real and said DNA tests pr would prove the alien did not come from Earth. Lee later claimed to his followers that police had blocked the news and pressured him to keep quiet. Police said the matter is under further investigation, so stay tuned. The second example of a freezer being the final resting place for a poor hapless alien is set in Russia. In 2009, a woman claimed she had kept an alien in her freezer for two years after its module crash landed outside her house. She wrapped the two foot long body with a huge head and stick like arms in plastic and hid it away. She finally revealed her secret to the authorities and the pictures have sparked an internet frenzy with stargazers claiming they now have proof that there is lo other life out there. These pictures look great. She claimed the body lay among the burning wreckage of a UFO. Why didn't she just tuck, tuck the UFO away as well? Hmm. Paranormal writer and part-time lawyer Michael Cohen said, This could be an elaborate hoax. However, the possibility it might be an alien should not be discounted. Russia is a hotbed of UFO activity with craft being tracked. Michael Cohen, did you even look at the photos? Pretty sure you changed your opinion. Hmm. Before we tackle Jonathan Reed, let's have a look at a few other instances of paranormal. Razor hijinks. Bigfoot is obviously another entity ripe for stories of convenient long-term cold storage of a decomposing corpse. In August 2008, at a hotel in Palo Alto, California, a pair of Bigfoot hunters say they will present what they contend is the most definitive proof yet of an animal that science says does not exist. DNA evidence and photographs of a dead specimen they said they found in a remote swath of woods in northern Georgia. It was very frightening at first, said Rick Dyer, 31, a former corrections officer, who coincidentally runs a business that offers Bigfoot tours. And it got even more frightening when we saw the others. Indeed, Mr. Dyer said he and his partner, Matthew Witten, saw three more of the beasts nearby as they dragged the body of said creature out of the woods. Moreover, Mr. Dyer said he has video clips and photographs to prove it. One photograph provided to the news media showed what resembled a gorilla or maybe an old sheepskin rug lying twisted in a freezer with a dollop of intestines protruding from its belly. There's a lot of comment being made that it looks fake. Or, or it looks like a suit, but these people wasn't there when I was sweating pulling this thing out of the woods. I drug that dead body in a seven foot, seven inch, 500 pound, half ape, half human creature through the forest of North Georgia mountains. I got home and put him in the freezer. We were not looking for Bigfoot. We wouldn't know what we were doing if we did. Dyer and me were simply looking for a quiet spot. And just as we got comfortable, that's when, that's when we spotted that son of a bitch and all the rest of them too, staring, peeping at us with those yellow eyes right at us. Now, we must insist that the future scientific analysis will bear out our claim by God. Dyer says, Steve Coles, who maintains the Sasquatch Detective website and hosts an internet radio show, broke the story confirming that the Georgia men's tale was in fact a hoax. In addition, 
Stanford University anthropologist Richard Klein said Monday that he was not aware that he had been identified as participating in the project. The hoax was discovered after an expedited melting process, Coles wrote. A break appears up near the feet area, and the two men I began examining the area near the feet. I observed the foot, which looked unnatural. I reached in, confirmed it. It was in fact a rubber foot. Cole said he contacted Tom Biscardi, the self-described real Bigfoot hunter. Who had been searching since 1971 for the creature. And he appeared alongside Witten and Dyer at the news conference. Yikes. Later that day, Tom Biscardi informed us that both Matthew Witten and Ricky Dyer admitted it was a costume. Witten and Dyer reportedly agreed to sign a promissory note as a mission of the hoax and to meet with Biscardi at a hotel. Bisc- Biscotti, Bacardi, Biscotti, Bar- Biscardi at a hotel on Sunday. But when Biscardi went to the hotel, the two had, <laughs> had left, surprisingly. Mm. At this time, action is being investigated against the perpetrators. When and Dyer failed to show up for a scheduled appearance on CNN's American Morning, and they've never been heard from again. Currently, there's a YouTuber who is claiming to have a freezer housing the remains of a long-dead, dismembered Bigfoot. Comedian, dog trainer, and artist Peter Kane from New York released a questionable clip on YouTube insisting he has proof of Bigfoot's existence. Peter Kane insists the object in the videos is the severed head of a mythical beast Bigfoot. Sasquatch hunters even suggested conducting a DNA test on the hilarious looking object to finally silence the doubters. Footage shows Peter examining what he claims is the head of the disgusting beast, which he says his dad shot in 1953 during a hunt. Since then, he says he's been keeping the 119 pound or 8.5 stone cranium in the freezer. He doesn't really go into why. He is only just getting it out now. The camera pans around to show what is supposed to be Bigfoot's severed neck. Despite its comical appearance, Peter insists the head is real. He says, I've taken a lot of shit on my YouTube channel. People saying that I'm always making jokes. This is not real. This is real. And at least some of the people commenting on the clip seem to believe him. One road. Looks the same as the one I saw here in Florida. To me, it looks like a giant brown version of Rankin and Bass's Bumble Puppet from the Christmas specials. Burlized. The comedian said he had kept the head in the freezer for nearly 65 years. Another viewer said, Wow, Peter. I'm a nurse with 35 years experience, and many of and many of those years were in the operating room or surgery. This looks really, really real to me. I hope I'm never in need of a limb reattachment when this lady's on duty. You'll have to excuse me, sir. All my medical training is based in paper mache and decoupage. A third commented, I feel vindicated. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. And one suggested, Why don't you just have it analyzed? I think it would be great to see a DNA test. Here's the DNA results. Home Depot, Jerry's Artorama, and the recycling bin. Numerous people have reported to have proof of Bigfoot over the years, and there are new sightings reported all the time. Once in a while, some Yahoo comes along thinking he's smarter than everyone else, and you get yourself a lame hoax. All right. This brings me to my final category before we get into the Dr. Reed hoax. Let's talk ghosts. A freezer can be a terrifying place, especially if you're stuffed in one, or when it's combined with a healthy dose of fictional horror. Author Stephen King joins Freezer and Fright cleverly in The Shining. Stanley Kubrick's film adaptation raises the stakes and heightens the tension in this pairing even further. side of a large freezer door is an unhinged Jack Torrance. There has long been debate about how Jack escaped the freezer. In King's source material, there is no doubt the supernatural is at play. In Kubrick's film, 
it is much more ambiguous as to whether supernatural forces are involved. However, during the freezer scene, Jack is heard speaking to Grady, the deceased, murderous, previous caretaker of the hotel. All of a sudden, we hear the sound of a large door lock disengaging. Seems pretty clear to me. I'd like to also include the stories of two individuals who claim to have seen or heard a ghostly entity in or around the freezer. Our first story comes from Squirt of Glitter, and she writes, Okay, a little backstory. In the last year and a half, my family has lost Pop Pop, old age, Grandpa, also of old age, and I lost my junior high PE teacher, who had been my mentor since I was one year old, also to old age. I'm 25, and because of a crappy student loan and my piss pop going through his own dark night of the soul, we live on a farm, so there's a ton of work. I live at home. It's not so bad. Except since 2014, when one of my little sisters, no relation, but known her most of my life, we were close, she died at 17 in a freak ATV accident. I started feeling different things. I've always felt things. When I was two and my grandpappy died, I looked at my mom dead in the eye, pun most definitely intended, and I told her I'd been playing with grandpappy's ghost three months after he died. I've always been open to more than this life. Side backstory. Our fridge is one of those side-by-sides with an ice water dispenser. The ice machine makes a lot of noise, but when I went to get carrots today, I heard two very distinct and separate knocks coming from the inside of the freezer. I opened the freezer and there was nothing. My dad had even taken out the ice machine, and I've never heard it make that noise, ever. I've had some weird stuff happen in the house too, but I need to share this part because I'm alone and I got the shite scared out of me. User 2 says, My guess is there's some ice spilled up somewhere near a fan. Two knocks of the fan blade were enough to knock it off. The squirt of glitter writes back, When it makes a noise, it's pretty distinct of ice. This was like a knocking sound. Like exactly how it sounds when you knock on a wooden door. User 3 says, It sounds to me like you've already made up your mind that it's a ghost and no other explanation will satisfy you. Squirt of Glitter says, I don't know. I just can't seem to get any satisfaction. Wise Man 1 says, My freezer makes that noise all the time. I think it may be the ice maker and not a ghost. Swervetronic says, Don't mind me. It was getting chilly in there. Maisie May 67 says, I don't have an ice maker, but my fridge knocks every night. I used to think it was someone knocking at my door. Ghosts only says, I'll take whatever ghost you don't want. Swervetronic says, Username checks out. Checks out bot says, It's funny because ghosts only username is very applicable to their content. Beep, beep, up, beep, up, beep, beep, reply stop. Swervetronics writes, Facepalm. Thanks, bot. Johnny Greenleaf 22 says, If I were paranormally inclined, and I am, I would say someone is trying to get in touch with you. Biff 1979 says, Try knocking back in a simple pattern. Mine does that every night. It's not a ghost. Our second freezer ghost story comes from After Birthday. He writes, I used to live in the 1970s house that was built on an old Air Force base. I had an encounter before, but not like this one I'm about to tell you. It was around 1 a.m. and I was still up watching TV when I heard a freak noise. Think it was the fridge I shrugged it off and went back to watching TV. Five minutes after the first noise, I heard another noise. This time it was not or sounded like some type of metal being scraped across the floor. That's not a fridge noise, I said to myself. I sat there on the couch and able to move because of how terrified I was. I was waiting for whatever was going to make its next move. Suddenly, I got a really cold and uneasy in the house, but I still couldn't move. Then something pulled me to turn around and look, look at the fridge, which 
The Dr. Jonathan Reed Alien in the Freezer Hoax. This farce originally aired November 10th, 1998 and November 11th, 1998 on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. I listened to this live, <laughs> it's an unbelievable tale, I have to say. It drew me in, it drew me in when I listened to it live at first. Um, you know, I did like that, not this stupid freaking bug, not that stupid bug. Royce Myers, the third. <laughs> And his website, UFO Watchdog, a site dedicated to exposing the hucksters that plague the UFO field since the mid 1990s. Covers in Myers' findings and report on Reed's current whereabouts and dealings, if any, today. Using the alias of Dr. Jonathan Reed, John Bradley Rudder. Hey, there he is. A thick patch of <laughs> fur growing there like a gigantic hairy caterpillar smushed into the space between his nostrils and his upper lip, jet black against the backdrop of his bleached out hair. Maybe it's his mouth brown. Is the real mastermind behind this hoax. Hey look, there's the other guy. The actual author of uh, Reed's book. And the story is so crazy. You know, these two, two guys. Reed wasn't even originally part of the thing. He got into it later. Like, the two guys, Wraith, Robert Wraith and some Chacon guy, which they were both aliases, they worked at a convenience store together and concocted this this tale. Royce Meyer's conclusions about Reed were finalized in 2002 when he presented his findings and offered the true identity of Dr. Reed and his associates on the Jeff Renz program. Aside from Reed and Wraith, Several other individuals involved have been identified and documented in Myers' full report on the hoax on his website. Here we're going to focus on the main original story and the two men, Dr. Jonathan Reed and Robert Wraith, that sold us a load of bull over the course of two nights on Coast to Coast 22 years ago. The first night, Wraith, the actual author of the book, got on the air and set the stage for the following night when Dr. Reed would emerge and clumsily narrate his melodramatic, ridiculous tale. And Wraith, like, coaxed him through the whole thing, would prompt him with different details. Don't you remember that? Oh, yes, yes, it was so, yes, I remember that. It was so frightening. That's right, that's right, what about this? Oh, yeah. Oh, Art, it was horrible. Oh, God. The information about Reed and Wraith that follows here is really just the work of Royce Myers and uh, anybody that helped him out at UFO Watchdog. John Bradley Rudder, aka Dr. Jonathan Reed, told a bogus story of killing an alien in the woods of Washington State on our Bell Show. Took the alien body home. The alien came back to life. The government stole all his evidence except some bad video and pictures. He claimed to be hiding from evil government agents. He has pictures of the rubber alien and fake UFO as proof. He's refused to have independent investigators evaluate evidence. The film type Dr. Reed claims to have used to take the photos uh, in 1996 was even manufactured until 97. It has since been discovered Dr. Jonathan Reed is actually Seattle. Washington resident named John, John Bradley Rudder. Uh, he lives in Seattle, Washington at that time, but he was apparently running from the evil <laughs> agents. But there's pictures of him like at weddings and things like that, hanging out at that same same period of time. And then uh, Myers goes on to talk about Robert Aria, which is Robert Wraith's real name. Robert Aria, AKA Robert Wraith, author of Reed's book, co-conspirator of the hoax and works as a clerk at a mini 
Kmart in Seattle. Pues era una tensión muy grande. Era una tensión muy grande la del momento. Y pudo tomar estas escenas justo después, justo después de correr esto. Aquí es importante, Adam, observar cómo cada vez que se acerca al aparato, cómo se distorsiona la imagen, escucha la desesperación del doctor. Uh, apparently he's, he's got like audio recordings of him talking to the alien going I'm not going to hurt you again I promise <laughs> and the alien's going those are hilarious these morons have been so exposed in the United States that they've had to move their con to Latin America you can thank uh Jaime Musan for that. You should check out Royce Meyer's website. There's a lot, there's so much about this story. They could turn this into a movie, a book, or something. I mean, here's a clip from BOA Audio in 2006 when Tim Banal interviewed Royce Myers. Dr. Reed had claimed that the government had yanked one of his teeth out and had replaced it with a fake tooth with a transmitter in it. <laughs> 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 this is this is honestly so funny. Reed demos the alien bracelet live on Canadian TV. <laughs> I couldn't find a better version, but in the clip he's describing the alien bracelet and how it's got these little needles that pierce the skin and merge into the nervous system. He goes on and on about how it hurts at first and explains that it needs to rest his arm on his chest, holding his arm with the device close to his chest so it doesn't flop off. He continues to stall until he's able to <laughs> shine a light in the camera. It honestly looks ridiculous. He claims it's controlled by them. Wh wacky stuff, weird, weird, wild stuff, Ed. Wacky, wacky stuff. When I was watching this, I mean, it just, he reminds me of a kid trying to per perform a magic trick for his parents. There's a mountain of discrepancies with Reed's story and all the players that have been identified and called out. These photos are bad and the videos are even worse. Here's a clip of that idiot using the bracelet, the, the link, the link bracelet. I believe it fits on your arm, the wearer kind of like this. If you push down the AHH, the needles penetrate your skin and tissue. To the nerves on your arm, there is some pain to it, but it quickly, quickly goes away and becomes kind of a cold, almost a frozen type feeling. Very quickly that pain subsides, but if it functions and sometimes it doesn't, it starts throbbing inside your chest, literally pulsation inside your chest. It <laughs> It starts in the center and emanates to your extremities and becomes harder and harder and then when that happens then it starts to be activated by AHHAHH there I can feel it I can feel it in my chest it's painful but if I hold my chest it has a tendency to be less painful and then they make the They make the decision AHA. Assume names. Cheap props. Bad actors. Sounds like the makings of a Don Dollar picture. Hang on a second. The plot of Galaxy Invader. Galaxy Invader, aka The Galaxy Invader, is a 1985 direct-to-video sci-fi film directed and co-written by Baltimore filmmaker Don Dollar. The film is about an alien who is pursued by morons after his spaceship crash lands. The film 
film plays out the success of films such as Creature from the Black Lagoon and adds a twist with a drunken redneck cast. Its low production value and sometimes golden, mostly very poor acting, makes for a cult classic exploration film with a comedic take on redneck culture with their view on foreigners. The cast is made of entirely non-professional actors, mainly friends and family of Dollar. Most fans of Galaxy and Raider recognize its flaws, but love the movie for its quirky and sometimes hilarious moments. It, it is featured in Cinematic Titanic, the complete collection on display. Segments of the film can also be viewed in the film Ventures release of Spanish. In the film Ventures release of the Spanish film Pod People in 1990. However, it was not legally licensed from the author. Pod People was featured in a segment of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and the unlicensed footage from Galaxy Invader was used. This hoax was apparently still being held up as truth as late as 2013 on Art Bell's short-lived coast-to-coast reboot, Dark Matter. The two of them carried on with this ridiculous, bogus story in detail again. <laughs> That's Art playing along all the while. Here's a clip. One of the most controversial and most debated and compelling cases of our time. Having some of the best evidence ever collected relating to the reality of alien or extraterrestrial intelligent life forms interacting with humankind, all of us. This case has also been featured in very very varied ET articles, television programs, literature, and numerous uh, publications around the world, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jonathan Lee. Great to hear your voice, buddy. I am hearing it, right? Happy Roswell, Mr. Bell. There you are. Just say Roswell's. Roswell. That that really does it. Roswell's. Um, so, uh, how the heck are you, Dr. Reed? Boy, you got a few days? <laughs> <laughs> I got um, two hours. I'm, I'm doing good now. And uh, we'll get into some of those details later. But, but I'm doing well. And I, okay, I certainly appreciate the... Uh, opportunity to be back on with you. Well, I know that your story is wildly controversial, but I also know, and the audience should know, I don't know if we'll bring them along, but we've got like three more witnesses to what you're about to tell us, as incredible as it's going to sound to this audience. I found a link in my research for Reed's recent internet activity. There was a much in 2018, someone was selling a signed first edition copy of Reed's BS book. <laughs> okay, why would a person who is supposedly running from rogue government agents, evil government agents at the time of his book release, why would he sit down, sign and personalize them? Dear Gary, keep on running like me. Love you, brother. Yours truly, Johnny Reed, Ph.D. And Peppy, may peace be with you, sir. P.S. I'm moving to Latin America. Kiss, kiss, Dr. R. There is a section in the book for thanks and acknowledgments. All of the true first names for those individuals involved in this hoax are listed along <laughs> with their appropriate surname. And wouldn't you know it, in among the names is a uh, Mr. Art Bell acted as if he had never met or spoken to the two men before they appeared on Coast to Coast the first time. As was mentioned in UFO Watchdog's findings, Reed has most likely fled to Latin America. So now he'll be selling his snake oil exclusively to Spanish speakers. Art Bell isn't around anymore to give these knuckleheads a national platform to push their nonsense. So. Reed seems to have packed up shop in the U.S. for now, at least. These types always find a way to slither back into the open if you wait long enough. 
You can still buy Reed's stupid book on Kindle on Amazon for $8.45 if you want to waste your hard-earned scratch and your precious time. There is nothing to gain by reading this book. Really, I hate myself for falling for the con in 98. This is payback, brother. Trust me. Your time is served much better by watching Galaxy Invader. I can't find anyone in favor of this guy, and for good reason. The researchers are hitching their their wagon to this guy anymore. No one seems to be taking up Reed's cause, at least in the U.S. I did find this one little gem on YouTube from several years back. I know you're right. I think this hoax is finally dead and buried for now. But like all the con men in this arena, they hang back lurking in the shadows, plotting and waiting to emerge yet again. The hoaxers. But like Reed, they are the true horror in these stories. Until next time, please subscribe.